Hello. Hello. Welcome back to Mike Dump. It is 12.01 February 16th, and we have Antoine Duplantis in, in studio. studio. Thank Hello. you for coming, bro. Yeah, good to be here. How you doing? Pretty good. Good, John. You didn't want to mess up the new dude with the with the headphones. I respect that. Yeah. Respect no, my that. hair is nice, very sensitive. Nice, very slick, light. You got you got some nice. <laughs> it gets messed up easily. You have some nice lettuce. I like the lettuce. Yeah, it's good. Sensitive. It's good. Yeah, it's I'm good. Yeah, growing it out. Who's got? Are uh, you trying to grow? You trying to do what? Uh, what Josh Smith has going on right now? The my hair doesn't curl. It just goes down straight. I kind of start looking like a psycho at a certain point because it's just a little uh, too straight. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah so I, ju- I gotta like try to layer it a little bit. Yeah, I gotta I got go. It. I gotta go to the the hairdresser and kind of get it made up a little bit but okay. I don't know it's kind okay. of pro ball cameras aren't on you as much yeah I get it I'll get that you're a little shaggy you get a little, you get a little shaggy yeah. you don't, you're not working on TV you don't have to worry about it Yeah. you're working on 17 straight days of playing baseball you're like yeah. well speaking of minor league baseball what's the deal with you what's going on this lockout's kind of messing a lot of stuff up have they told you anything about where you're going what's going to happen when spring training starts all that stuff yeah I'm leaving uh, I'm leaving March 2nd uh, they, they originally they said March 3rd and they are like no new New date. We got a new date for y'all, March second. So I was like, all right, <laughs> one day, <laughs> one day, <laughs> one day. Move it up a day. Yeah. Sent out a mass, y'all making some real progress. Mass, over there. Really get these mass boys in email, here. just like, hey, we've got a new date, new date, big update, March second. So we're going March second. <laughs> March second. Okay, uh, it looks like it looks like big league spring training is getting pushed back. Yeah. So I'm sure y'all are going to be like the obviously the focal point, which I can't, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you. I don't know how much they're going to be locked in on y'all. They're going to be working y'all's ass to the ground yeah. because. Yeah. They're bored. They got nothing else to do. They're in. Yeah. They're in. A, they're Seems in. like they're gonna make the push to be like, oh yeah, well you know we can just start the player. Hey, this is a big opportunity for y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have the big leagues coming on. Yeah. Y'all have to yeah. go. We have, you know, you know. There's gonna be opportunity if we don't play. There's gonna be opp- right. all this stuff, which is not true. I just feel bad for y'all in spring training because it's gonna be it's gonna wear a lot. Yeah. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be weird. I don't know. Like, I wonder what's gonna happen with like AAA guys that are kind of like borderline right. big leaguers, but not forty man guys. Like, is that at the beginning if the season major league seasons get delayed like are those triple a guys gonna go like well, are somebody gonna be in like double a that you would assume be there, or, or like, you would assume triple a would not even start on time right like you would assume triple a big leagues are majors. gonna be kind of on the same but path but, but maybe not but they're saying the minor like the entire minor league season yeah. is supposed to be on time yeah i don't know yeah. we'll see there's a lot there's a lot to unpack with all this stuff the lockout affects a lot more than just the guys in the big leagues it affects minor league free agents like me it affects a side, minor sidebar. I'm literally listening yesterday. I forget the guy's name, so I, I'm, I won't go that far. But there was a former MLB executive who like doesn't work for anyone now, who was just basically giving like an update on like the lockout and stuff. And the guy was talking about how now players don't care about how many like rounds there are in a draft, and he was like, "Oh, I get it. I'll hear the. Well, what about the the thirtieth rounder and the fortieth rounder who made it to the big leagues and blah 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 blah." And he was like. Well, now those guys would just have to go prove it in a in another like separate league and go kill it. I go, no, they just won't play. They just won't play. They just won't like they won't play. That's not how it goes. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. like the the ignorance to not understand that that's not really what's gonna go on. Like you take Albert Pujols and he doesn't get drafted, he's probably not going to play anymore. He's not league. gonna play. He's just probably gonna move on to the next part. Now of you his may life. have some that go and do that, but the majority of them are the not gonna do that. The majority is not gonna happen. They're not gonna so have that like opportunity. That, like sitting there saying that like that's what would happen. Like that's just not real. I love the, I love that idea to think. Well, I'm sure just work harder. It's like, what do you mean work harder? Yeah. Like, we're doing what we're exactly. Hey, you, don't like you, play, you don't like you play better. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, actually, I hit 300 with 25 homers. I'm playing pretty good. There's not much good. I can yeah. do. Yeah. I'm, I'm playing do. pretty good. There's not much I can do when you're paying that guy 15 million dollars a year and he's guaranteed it and you don't want to move him. So right. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. I'm stuck. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just uh. There's best of luck out there. Good luck with the you know everything you're doing. Definitely yeah. a lot of favoritism out in the minor league. The, the, like I said, the lockout messes a lot of stuff up. That's the beauty of college baseball, though. You don't have the messiness of the business of baseball. You have literally, and I tell people this all the time, especially people who didn't play college baseball, right? Got out of high school, went straight. Like, college baseball is so much fun because the only thing that mattered was winning and hanging out with the boys after. Yeah. That was it, yeah. right? Well, and like one thing is like, in pro baseball compared to college baseball, college is about what can you do right now? Like. Yeah. In this at bat, yeah. this game, this weekend, like what can you do to help the team in this moment right now? And like, I, there's a lot of guys in pro ball that I'm sure if you if you throw them in a big league game for two months, like they'd do fine. But they're thinking like, what can you do in the future in pro ball? Like it really doesn't. Like you can go two years of playing well, and it like it doesn't really matter. It's which, like, but what about five years from now? Which right? brings me thinking. to which which is brings me back to the lockout talk is that's a big 
talking point in this lockout, right? This is that's a big reason of why they're trying to make teams more competitive. The reason why teams don't worry about what can you do now and they worry about what can you do five years because they're not worried about winning now. Yep. A lot of teams aren't worried about winning this minute, which is not it's not good for baseball. Baseball is I went on ESPN.com to just see some of the sports headlines, and baseball wasn't even the top part of the ticker. I had to go and search for extra sports. <laughs> Are you kidding me? They, and then they're really missing that you're losing that battle. Like, you're you're badly losing that battle. Like, you're so worried about making as much dollars as you can that you're losing any kind of real interest in the sport. Here's the thing. They came out and said, they came out and said, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to give this offer, this proposal to the baseball team, or the baseball team, to the players' union, and we think it's going to be good. I think they're going to be happy with it. They gave it back, and it was nothing. They're like, happy? this is bullshit. Like, what do you mean <laughs> happy with it? Like, you went up by a smidgen. Like, you didn't do anything that we talked about. So, of course, they're not going to agree to it. And, of course, spring training is not going to start on time because you literally have shown no good faith in trying to make any type of progress forward, right? So, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I, they're going to play. They have to play. Yeah, they can't miss out. Happen. But I don't know what it's going to look like, when it's going to start. But college baseball is what we're going to talk about because college baseball is way more fun. College baseball has more energy. College baseball is actually going to start on time, and it's happening this weekend. What is your favorite memory of, like, the first opening weekend of college baseball? For me, I, told, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Like I loved – I would leave class early or I would just skip class altogether on, on Friday. And I would drive down Burbank right before you got to Nicholson – and people would be tailgating, especially when SEC play started, right? People would be out there tailgating. There's a yeah. buzz. You can just kind of feel it and have the windows down. And I just wanted to go. And I just wanted to, like, take in the sights and smells of, mm. like, what's going, what's happening, what's about to happen. So what are your memories? Like, that's, like, the memory that sticks out for me. What's I, your memory? I had a funny story for that. My first game, freshman year, opening night, me and O'Neal Lockridge were roommates. You know, oh, O'Neal yeah. Lockridge went to St. Thomas, Thomas More. And uh, we were roommates. We were living at WCA. What room? Um, what room in WCA? I don't remember. Two hundred eight was the room. We had there was like a three <laughs> three year stretch where we had like some boys that came through two hundred eight. That was Renato and DJ in them's room before me. It was great. It was great. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, so it just got like happenstance. It just like oh, it was just like okay, this got was a good run of guys. Yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Those walls could talk. Yeah, but, if they could talk. So me and me and O'Neill had the exact same <laughs> class schedule. We had the, right. so we we lived together, went to class together, and like. Once the season started, like it was, it was hot that weekend for whatever reason, and we had to take, we started trying to take the Tiger Tracks bus from like Cox all the way to the business buildings. Y'all rode the bus because because it, dude, <laughs> it, was living. It's wow, like, it's like a twenty minute walk, dude. Yeah, like yeah. from like WCA to from your yeah. place in WCA all the way to the other side of campus. No doubt, that's like a twenty minute walk. You know how many times? You know how many times? It's a hike. You know how many times taking the bus yeah. crossed yeah. my mind in college? Yeah, <laughs> Zero negative Zero. times actually. What taking, taking the bus? Yeah, O'Neill, O'Neill was a big sweater though, so he was okay. like, "Dude, I, we, got some, <laughs> we got some, we got some girls, big sweater. We got some yeah. girls in the class. Like I can't yeah, be showing yeah, yeah. up sweating with smell, backpack, the backpack shit. sweat on your back. morning class. Yeah. Yeah. But but anyway, we go, we take the bus, and like usually, I guess people take were on the, the bus, bus, and we didn't realize you got to pull the wire when you want to stop. Uh, rookie, yeah, I just rode there. Absolute rookie. <laughs> So we, oh, wow. so we just wrote How did it. They know? And like, so they go, they pass up the business buildings, and me and I were like, eh, whatever. I guess we're just we're, we're just not going too long for the ride. Then they go down the um, like that whatever street Ben Hur extension or what, whatever it is, going towards like football ops. And we're just like, all right, I guess we're along for the ride. Then we go drive by Alex <laughs> Box Stadium, and it's like opening day, and like we see like the bunting on the facade, Coach Maneri reference, and yep. we see all this. Yep. Sh- we yep. see all. The- we see all like the stadium it's all dressed up it's all nice for opening weekend and then like we pull back around Izzo's and we it's like a 40 minute ride like we're picking up started. we're picking up people like, we're really? picking up people at Southgate we're picking up we're picking up people by like um this is your first opening day yeah by uh Lee and uh Nicholson we go man, all it took the, whole the way tour back around, around campus. It, took, it took an hour wait 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 time out now I guys I just got this question I'm trying to understand this this is the spring semester was this y'all, what, what made y'all finally say after a whole semester, hey, let's take the bus today? Sweating our ass off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bro, we're, gonna, we're just taking the bus now. <laughs> but apparently we didn't learn anything because we didn't know how to stop the bus. So then we just took it all the way around, took an hour. We get off the bus exactly where we got on it. 
and just walked home. <laughs> we <were just> like, <laughs> <laughs> what a great, what a great little like tour of like, hey, this is opening day. Let me just take a tour of this campus and yeah. see what's going on. And we then P Money was like, well, Antoine, I heard you missed class today. Yeah, see coach. What had happened? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. This is a funny story. This is what happened. It was actually on time. You know, you know how much coach would not believe that. Actually, he probably would. Actually, believe him. He for probably, sure. Well, no, this is fresh. This is before Antoine was Antoine. Yeah, had yeah zero, okay. zero hits. He had zero hits at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Which zero hits and from zero hits to all time hits leader. That's great. Yeah. What was your walkout song? My Type by Saint Motel. Did you see the stuff that was going on on Twitter? Huh. Well. Was it Twitter beef? No. Well, no. not not for me, but um. They came Jay Mitch out, had a good one. They just came out with the walk up songs. You're welcome. And yeah. a freshman and a oh, freshman yeah, yeah. used my walk up song this year, and is a pitcher. And I'm and I'm like thinking that's kind of funny. At least he's like a pitcher. He's like not a hitter. Like kind of using my walk up song because I used the same one for four years, and like dudes on Twitter. <laughs> Like we're quote tweeting him and stuff. Like this dude's got a lot of nerve trying to use this walk up song. Like going off on it. Grant Taylor, pitcher, and he actually DM me. He's like, "Hey man, I didn't know. I didn't like realize like LSU fans were this like adamant about like walk up songs and like the tradition and stuff." I'm like, "You must be from out of state or something." Yeah, <laughs> you <laughs> must not be. From you know, you here. must not be from around these parts here because that's not that's what happens. But he was like, "Yeah, I changed it to Purple Haze. Though we're good. We're good." I was like, "I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to think about that when I'm pitching." I'm like, "Probably, probably a good call." When you when you when you pick a walk up because there's a lot of science that goes behind picking a walkout song, right? There's not just saying, "Oh, I like this song. I'm gonna play it." Like you have to see, okay, what song plays well over the speakers. And then you got to determine, okay, do I want the song for me? Find the spot. Find the spot. Maybe happy medium. Yeah. Find the beat. Find the drop. Whatever you want. Is the song for me? Is the song for the crowd? What do I want to get out of this walkout song? Right? For me, it was always about, I want people in the crowd to be happy, like, feeling it. Right? Like, if they're feeling it, I'm feeling it. I don't care about me getting jacked up. I get jacked up if people are feeling it in the crowd. So my my, my freshman year was a a swing. I I didn't even pick my walkout. I didn't even know who picked my walkout song. It wasn't even, I don't even know what it was. Was that the, wasn't that the thing? Like uh, the older guys would pick like the freshman walk-up no. song. Didn't that happen a little bit? <laughs> not really. No, not, not when I was there, but I've heard that before. If but. you don't put your walkout song, if you don't write on the sheet, someone picks it up. Oh yeah, Alex you, Edward. Played? You get yeah, you get the most generic uh, top yeah. ten. Uh, yeah, Shakira. Hot Shakira. now song. Alex, right Alex <laughs> Edward as a freshman didn't put a walkout song. Didn't write a walkout song. We put no scrubs. That's his walkout song. That's so he had to walk out to his first day ever oh. at Alex Black Stadium was. Scrubs by TLC. Yep. Not good. But so my thing, my, my sophomore year walkout song was Tricky by Run DMC. Nice. And then my junior year was Jump Around by House of Pain. So like I wanted like some little energy in the building. Yeah. 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 So that was Jump mine. Yeah. Uh, I really liked Let Me Clear My Throat by DJ Cool, but that was Wally Pana's song. And like I don't think anybody's ever walked out to that since Wally Pana. So like I was like, I'm not obviously. Imagine if that guy would have done that. Jesus. Uh, yeah. Let me clear my throat. Yeah, he's like, but you I don't really know if, don't get I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody on the team now would know that because uh, Nick Pond was playing with me. Yeah, I don't you think know, so. so like, I, you know, like that was, you know, that was uh, when I got there it was eight, nine years after. Yeah. While he passed away, and Nick was playing with me, so like I had that. Yeah. You know, whatever. Was your was your mindset the same thing? Did you have? Dude, so I was actually, at first, I was like, I was super into Future, the rapper, and like. Like that's so not my style at all. Right. <laughs> like, Can you imagine? I love this my young thug and like future my freshman year. Like, like they were they were just hot at that point. Like so I was like like purple rain and all that stuff and I was like I almost did peacoat by future but like the first line he says after that was just like not a line I'd want any like parent or kid to hear. Right. <laughs> and I almost did that because like if I were to actually pick something that was in my head when I was like hitting that'd be like a song but I don't actually want like people to hear that. Right. 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 It's like. Me and my older brother went on FIFA playlists because they would always have like upbeat songs, and we just found a song. I don't even really like necessarily like the song. Like I don't put it on my playlist or anything, but I thought it'd be perfect for like the crowd because it kind of yeah. has like one of those clappy starts. Yeah, like yeah, it has yeah. like a, a right. nice little tempo to it, so people can kind of get into it, and people liked it. So. Nice. And yeah, so you kept it. You yeah, ran with kept it. it for four what was yours? Ran with it. Yeah, it was all. Uh, I only remember my last year was uh, Ti, my life here in entertainment. My life. But I don't remember what it was the my other life. years before that. But I kind of try. I kind of try to go with like a little happy medium, yeah. like something I like that'll kind of right. like, right. you know, wake me up a little bit, not really do too much, and something the crowd will like, and then for sure, kind of find a spot in the song that I'd, something might oh. mean something to me. A would little they bit. let you do that? Like, would they like you? I want it for a minute. 15 yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It ain't oh, just. Yeah, yeah. A, it's, it's not just to like play it from the start. It's yeah. uh, give me hey this fifteen and, second window. Give me this yeah. for pictures. Like give me this two minute window. 
Because how long? Like, didn't you know? Like, there's a certain amount of time it was going to it's play. It's about right? seven to ten seconds. Yeah. Really. Like, sometimes it, it, it just it depends on honestly. It just it depends on the stadium, man. Like, yeah, I've seen some stadium operations that are like unbelievable with it. Like, really good. Like, I'm talking like out. It's already going. Yeah, I've seen some stadium operations out. They throw it back. First pitch comes up. They throw it. They throw it back. And now they're like, oh, and now just like, are you kidding me? What's, what's happening? Like, what? <laughs> like, so it just depends. Dude, my my pro ball like in high this past year, they were the pro king. The worst, they were the yeah. king yeah. at like you had to step out of the box and like yeah. the umpires are like, come on, turn yeah. it off because like they just would not turn yeah. it off. Yeah. Hell yeah. Just so my favorite. Well, <laughs> so you're talking about length of time, right? And yeah. like cutting it. Hitters have a shorter walkout than pitchers. Please yeah. say what I think you're I, I wish he was in here. If he would, if he would, please say if what I think Chad you're Jones would stop, I'm, I'm texting right. If Chad Jones would stop standing us up, he's coming. Say he's coming next Wednesday. Just tell the story, dude. Just tell the story. This is a so funny Chad thing, did not come to LSU as a pitcher. As a reliever, you get two minutes of your walkout. Chad had he put down his he put down his walkout hit, song as a hitter as a hitter right right so they only had the 15 seconds of it was money on my mind and now mind you like this was at a time where like you could find like there was Apple Music and all this stuff but it wasn't that easy to be able to like curate it all and put it together and then maybe like find the the, the good the, part right well no no find literally the edited version of the song oh, or yeah. the other version yeah, so like. It? The, you had the to part go that, wire this time. Yeah, the part that he the, the part that he put up there was a 15 second cut of a clean part of the song. Money on mine, right? So he used it. Well, Chad, nobody thought Chad could pitch. Chad becomes the story is told. Chad becomes the reliever, shoves in his bullpen, does all that stuff. Coach says that he's gonna play him on Wednesday. Nobody in our media department, nobody on our team <laughs> thought Chad was gonna pitch this Sunday. At a, in a day game against Auburn at home. Nobody thought that. So coach puts Chad in. I'm in center field. Jay Mitch is in, in right. what, left field or right field? Right, right. right field. So we are in center, and we're already laughing, cracking up that Chad's pitching. Yeah. Like, damn, can you believe this motherfucker's pitching? Like, like literally looking back fuck? and forth as he's, like, warming up, like, what the fuck? Oh, you're like, going? looking at him in the bullpen, like, don't just, put Chad No, like, what time? I'm going to just interject. Y'all don't know. Like, the story was, like, Chad was on the team that year, start the year. He's an outfielder. He's hitting. And then at one point, they basically just said, hey, Chad, you have to do, like, straight up do spring football. And you, you can't come back until spring football is done. So Chad's not on the team for a good month Almost and a half. Yeah. When he came back, we were dying out of the pen for left, for like arms, like reliever arms. And we somehow was like, oh, Chad was like, oh, yeah, I could pitch a little bit. I threw in high school. <laughs> Throws one bullpen. Hey, yeah, the next weekend, that, that same weekend, we're playing Auburn. And he comes in on a Sunday game, and it's like a tight situation. The so, biggest middle of the lineup. All yeah. the best hitters. So he's coming out of, he's coming out of the pen. Me and him are looking back and forth at each other like, what the fuck? What is going, what is going right on? What is Maneri thinking? Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, he's coming out of the pen. He's like starting to warm up. His music starts playing. Money on my mind. So he goes through. I'm like, okay. like what? It gets past the 15 <laughs> seconds. I know every word to the song. Oh, and so, so me 15 and seconds, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like oh, it is dropping. Fuck. All this shit. I'm like, I'm sitting in the outfit. I'm like, oh, my God. And people are going nuts. They're Loving excited. It. They can't wait for Chad to get on there. They don't care. They don't even know. I don't even know if they're listening to the song. They just hear the beat. They see Chad Jones, and it is the most derogatory. Bro, I'm in the outfield with my glove over my face, just dying. Laughing. We could not stop laughing. I could stop laughing. And then he Chad shoves, gets out the inning, and that's it. And then he starts banging his chest, and then like they obviously says, "Hey Chad, we gotta fix this walkout a little bit." But <laughs> keep it. Like, Here's the best. It, it, was, was, it was my first time ever seeing that happen because yeah. like usually you never see. It was. It was. It never gets it, to that it point. Was yeah. It, it was, was great. It was awesome, but. Oh, man, I can just so see Chad. So like, we need left-handed so pitchers. Stories. Him with his hat like backwards to the dugout. Like, oh, I pitched. You're like, what, Chad? Like, that's basically, oh, that's basically no, that's how it was. Yeah. No, that's for real. he would come off and take his hat off and then chest bump because his hat would fall oh, off his head because of his dreads. Yeah, dude. Kudos to Buzzy for taking those. Oh yeah, Buzzy uh, got he hammered. He got dominated. Hey, Buzzy, yeah. Nolan, Nolan used to tell a story about Chad. This is a very true story. Chad, Chad was standing next to Nolan during a game later that year in the dugout, and somebody was on the mound struggling to throw strikes or whatever. And, like, you know, they're standing there looking back and forth. And Nolan was, like, he, he could see, like, Chad, like, thinking, like, just puzzled about something. And then Chad finally looked at him and was just like, man, I just don't get it, man. You pitch all your life. How you just can't throw strikes? <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. It was dead serious. Shit, it's hard. <laughs> did, you play, did you play with anybody like that that was so, like, talented? Talented that, like, shit that, like, that was hard to most Kinda people. Kind Watson. Just, Watson, Zach yeah, Watson. He's, I mean, he's balling out right now. In he's a little ball. bit that like that. We we exaggerate a story about him, but it's like 
It's partially true, partially not. I don't know if you remember his freshman year in that regional where he hit two homers. The first game, second game, hit two homers. Like yep. back-to-back days with two homers. And we make fun of him. I this isn't completely true, but we make fun of him. Then BP, Micah, Gibbs started telling me, he's like, why don't you just start finishing with two hands? Because it just seems like your bottom hand just like falls off. and Or your right. top hand falls off and you're swinging with one hand. He goes, all right, I'll try to swing with two hands. He hit, hit two homers that night. Next night he hits two homers. And, like, the, the reporters are asking him, like, what'd you change? He was like, oh, well, you know, uh, Micah Gibbs told me to start finishing with two hands. I said, hell, might as well try it in the game. Those guys are the best such hitters. A, such a Watson, like, just. Those guys are the best like, hitters. This guy hunts, fishes, doesn't even probably work out in the offseason and goes and hits 20 homers. Like, it's just, those guys are the best. Those guys are the best hitters that you can come through. Not going to overthink it. They don't, ever, they don't think anything. Yeah, they don't think at they all. Just just up they just think they're the best. They yeah. just think they're going to hit that's a homer I mean. every time. That's what they, they just get. They just see it hit it, and that's what they tell you. Like, I'll see the ball hit the ball. Yeah, it's not that easy. It's hard. I'm seeing it. I'm just not hitting it. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I promise Trying. you, I'm seeing it. And sometimes, I don't even think I'm seeing it. I'm just swinging at where I think it's going to be because I don't see anything. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm swinging <laughs> upside down right now. Don't know. Get the other side of the box. Yeah, exactly. I got, give me a broomstick, I have a better chance of hitting with a broomstick. Those, those, are the guys, those are the guys, when they start struggling, they do even less. So like if they're like a three round guy in, in BP, start struggling. Yeah. Man, game time. Yeah, only. I need to go hunt. I need yeah, to go game play. time. Game only. time only. I'm not going out yeah. to BP yep. today. Ain't playing. Ain't hitting. <laughs> Ain't doing whatever. That's how they go. Uh huh. It's never rehearsed too. That's just how they work. And then you have the other guys that work real hard, get their hands bloody, and it's and like they're struggling more now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yep. oh, oh yeah. You over, overdo it. Absolutely. No doubt. What's your favorite? What was your favorite moment here at LSU? Like what was you? Like you had a bunch of moments. Obviously, you're here for four years. You broke the 2017. Super regional. I'm about to say, you went first to Omaha. first game. It, going to Omaha was great, but that the game that we that we clinched it, it was a blowout. So like celebrating and stuff was fun, but like it was a long game, a lot of pitching changes. Like we won by 15, but the first game of the super regional, we were down by who y'all play? Four in the eighth, Mississippi State. And Andy Canizero was the oh, head coach. Yeah. Oh yeah, wow. I, I forgot. That was a so big, a lot, a lot big of drama, series. Yeah. A lot of drama. So Andy Canizero was the coach, and we were kind of like they had a they had a good first round or maybe second rounder, Connor Pilkington, he was on the mound, big lefty, and he was throwing really well. And um, we were struggling. Like, we didn't score any runs for first eight innings. And how, how, eight, how much was Maneri panicking? Oh, my God. He was he was, <laughs> he was, he was, he was pacing up and down, getting the one sip of water at the dry cooler and throwing it down. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just a segue to the next question. Keep yep. going. But, uh, but anyway, it was 4-0. Um, we get a rally going. Dykeman hits a big double. Uh, Is that the year Dykeman had a bunch of clutch hits in the postseason, right? 17? No, actually, the year before he had a bunch of clutch homers. That's what it was. He had like okay. those huge homers. Yeah. But this is like a really big double, really huge double to tie it up, tie the game, and then Watson comes up. They had they had this Team USA uh, cutter guy that they brought in from the bullpen. He's warming up, whatever. Watson's standing on deck. He don't. He, he has no shit. idea. He don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, he, does he has not no care. idea. He does not care. You don't tie, even know the guy's name. Yeah. Tie game. He comes up. I think it was first pitch. I could be wrong about that. Cutter right down the middle. Waddy hits a Waddy hits a single to, to left. We uh we got have the go ahead run and then Hess comes in and that's when he goes like Nuclear. psycho mode Hess and he was throwing like ninety eight mile an hour cutters and like ninety two mile an hour sliders and like literally they had no chance. Yeah. Like I think one guy got on, but other that, that, that we're, postseason that Hess had that year was like we were watching it in the clubhouse. And Ian Kinzer looked at me and goes, who the fuck is this guy? We need him right now in our bullpen. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah. today. well, I don't know, but I mean, he's good. He looks good. He's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, they call him wild thing. I don't yeah. know. And like he was starting midweeks and like getting shelled every once in a while. But like once he got moved to the bullpen that year, he just found something and it was like. Started shoving. I, I had never had more confidence in a guy. And him at the end of the that's that fun, season. huh? You put the you put the, the closer, you're like, oh, this guy's gonna that's how you lose. No, it's like day, day's over, like, yeah, yeah. game's over. You, yeah. you can't hit him, he throws 98 mile an hour cutters and like a slider, yeah, that's like gonna buckle your knees every yeah. time. Like, you can't hit him. <laughs> here's, here's the next question What's your favorite? <laughs> Tell the truth, what is your favorite P Money meltdown moment? I'm, I gotta hear it. I got so many of them. <laughs> P Money meltdown moment. Oh. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta, y'all gotta, gotta throw some out there so I can. Okay, so start thinking I'll about give you some of ours. So we had. We're gonna we're, see him on Friday. We're we're, we're seeing on Friday. This is not bad. It's <laughs> not gonna it's not gonna crush. There's so many, right? And he's Jared's probably got the best because Jared was in there when they were bad in seven. Yeah. And they were bad in eight, and they got that long winning streak, and then we're good in nine, and like, so he has a lot, right? 
We came back from this is my uh, sophomore season. We we're we we're the number one team in the country at one point, thirty two and six. Ronaldo got hurt. We went through a ski. We lost seven straight games. Ooh. We got swept at Ole Miss. We basically got walked off three games. Lost to UNO. Midweek. Midweek. And then got swept against Florida. So, actually, we <laughs> lost eight straight games, I think. And we lost at Tulane. Oh, no. We're coming back on the bus from Tulane. Coach, and coach doesn't say anything to us. I'm like, uh-oh. This is not good. It's not good. Pulls all nine of us into, the, into his office. Nine starters. And he had a little fever blister on his lip. <laughs> and he is going down every single person individually and calling us out and telling us, like, what we're doing wrong, how, whatever. And he gets to me and he, like, gets, goes even more berserk. His lip starts bleeding, his blood coming out of his teeth. And he's like five foot six, five, whatever. And I'm like, I'm thinking he's like seven feet tall at the time, right? So he's going down. He goes, and Micah Gibbs. And Blake Dean. <laughs> Micah Gibbs hitting 415 at the time, right? He's the only one doing it. He's going through the whole deal, like, so irrational with some of the stuff he's saying. He was like, oh, Mikey, I'm the great. Like, he goes, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop fucking crying when you go back to the dugout. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And he's bleeding. He's doing all this stuff. And he goes through every single person. I'm like, this is not this is not good. Not I'll just, good. I'll just build off of that because he literally did the same thing, what, two years before? So my the last year in the old box, we were not very good. And we were playing Georgia at home who came in as like the number one oh, ranked team. Gordon Beckham was playing shortstop. They were unbelievable. He's hitting like 400 on the year. We played them decently. First two games, they beat us. Third game, travel day, getaway day. Is this they were going to have to fly. Yeah, 2008. They were going to have to fly out. Um, we get up really early on them, like by like five or six runs. They battle the way back in the game, tie the game. We go into extra innings. Blow the game. Don't win it. Tie game. They fly out. They leave. So we ended up 0-2-1 and on the weekend, right? Don't win a game. After the game, <laughs> he came in the old clubhouse and legit went. He went nine starters for y'all. He went all the entire roster. Anybody can face get Face-to-face as to why we lost. I'm talking like I DJ. He got to Ryan Verdugo. He goes, he goes, Ryan, we lost today because of you. I didn't even have the fucking balls to start you today. You were supposed to start. Me. He goes, that's why we lost. I'm, I'm telling you, we wore everybody out, bro. We're all just like, oh, boy. Wow, he's nuts. He lost. Oh, no, this is not good. This is not good. They don't, want, they don't want 23 straight games. Yeah, then we, then we just went on it. But it was the funniest thing ever, dude, because he's, he's not afraid to lose. And it was just it was great watching it. Yeah, he is. He's irrational in his blow-ups. Like, I, I, had a, I had a couple... I got a couple good ones that come to mind now. One of them was um, my freshman year. Try to jog the memory just a little bit. This is like my first one. This is like my first in-season blow-up I got to experience. And you know those are different than like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are different than preseason fall blow-ups. Because like he doesn't really want to blow up in the fall. Like he just does it. Sometimes he does it to, yeah. He just does it to get on you. But like in the season, like that's coming straight from the heart sometimes. You know? Like even though the things he's saying are crazy. Well, he's emotional. Yeah. 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 But like you know it's like getting to him. And we, we go... Uh, our first midweek game of the year, we go to Lamar, which was insane. Will Davis. Yeah, Will, uh, Will Davis. Yeah, Will Davis was there. Yeah, but he wasn't the head coach. He was he was turning into the you head coach. You had to go to year. Lamar. We went to That's Lamar. That's like where we went to Shreveport during a midweek. Like, yeah, during what? a midweek. How would they yeah. swing that? And we we go up eight runs in like the second inning, and they just don't score again for the rest of the rest of the game. And like pitcher comes in, they start giving up knocks, they start gaining momentum. We can't we can't get any hits. And then, anyway, we get back. We lose 11-8. We get back to the locker room after driving to Beaumont. We get back to the locker room. And, like, Coach wants to have the meeting after driving, like, from Beaumont on a Tuesday. Yep, yep. Like, he wants to have the meeting. And he just starts calling people out. And, like, he's calling out Cartwright for tweeting too much. (laughs) (laughs) He gets gets so irrational that he starts saying all this shit. Like, Coach, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, how did you even see that tweet? Yeah, you don't even have a Twitter. Do you even know what Twitter is? Like, you tweeted that on the bus. Like, how did you see that already? And then, like, Austin Bann was one of the last pitchers to, like, give up some runs. And he's like, 
Bane, what the hell is wrong with you? Last year you gave up runs. This year you blew the game. Dutchtown quarterfinals in high school. I saw you blow game. He's talking, he's talking, he's talking hey, about high school. Coach pulled out receipts from high no, school. Dude, he, yeah. dude, he's still like, he does not believe Greg Dypen can catch a pop-up to this day because apparently he went to a game when he was playing at Brother Martin and saw him miss a pop-up. One pop-up. And like he's like, for his whole career at LSU, he's like, Greg just can't catch a pop-up. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> Greg can't catch a pop-up. Hey, the, oh, the, the best part about it is I forget too, and that same is so funny you say that because in that same one, he went to Verdugo, and at some point, I don't know if y'all remember Matt Clark at all. Matt, oh, Clark, yeah. Matt Clark that year led the nation in homers. Like 28. 29, like 28, 29. He got to Matt Clark and he goes, oh, Matt Clark, big Matt. <laughs> Literally, he goes, Matt Clark, big Matt. He goes, hit the homer in the first and second and he shit down your leg in the seventh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, damn. Wrong time. Like, it's hard to hit those things. It's hard. <laughs> like, Matt shit. <laughs> a big solo homer guy. Like, solo oh, homer man. Guy. That's his big thing. Being, oh, anybody can hit a home run. Anybody can hit a solo homer. Can you hit the three run homer in the seven? It's like, gosh, really not anybody can hit a homer. It's kind of hard to hit those things. There's not that many home runs that, be, that are hit. He would be so embarrassed to hear these stories, but it's so funny, man. That's oh, the, man. He would, he, would sit here, he would sit here and be like, that's not true. He swear he never that. said him. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Because yeah, yeah, exactly. it probably doesn't even feel like him that does it. Because he doesn't want to do like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's you like know? his oh, alter yeah. ego or something. <laughs> he gets so locked in on what's going on. and so emotional that his just emotions take the best of him. He has no idea what's going on. But he, There's another one. Uh, y'all, did you, y'all played three-man ball, huh? Shit. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. Played, played, that's, that's, that's where the helmet That's, that's where the helmet That's where the helmet, where the helmet came from. out. So he has the biggest head known to mankind. Right? So it's a seven and five eights respected. Yeah, so he he shows up. What's We're, after that? I mean you and Barry. Eight. He That's did, Bruce Bochy, yeah. eight. He needed he needed to walk in. So we're in Omaha and we're hitting BP before game. And it's one of those things like look, we're undefeated in Omaha. We have the max amount of days off, like we're feeling ourselves, right? So we're having fun at practice and coach is throwing batting practice. It's one of those days where like it was sloppy. I, I mean it was sloppy. We we're making yeah. we weren't focused. We're locked in. Yeah, it was Not a practice. Right. It wasn't before game. So Jerry and we we're kind of laughing before BP, and we're sitting there, and I'm on the side of the I'm on the side of the cage, and we're playing three man ball. And we're having like a little BP to get loose, and we're not playing well. All of a sudden, Jerry takes DJ's helmet because we had to have helmets for BP. He puts Lamedy's helmet on. And his helmet goes like to this part of his head. <laughs> Mind so, you, DJ's helmet is like a freaking peanut. Yeah, like DJ it's has just a small. He's like a seven. It's almost a size small. <laughs> size too small for Jerry. So Jerry has it on the top of his head, and he just like struts into the, into the cage. And Maneri's like... And the whole team the loses it. Like, yeah, the entire team dies we're laughing. We're dying laughing. And Maneri picks the ball. He doesn't know he picks the ball. Up, and he throws the ball up. And he starts yelling at us. Get the fuck off the field. Get the fuck off the field. <laughs> and he goes and he starts wearing us out. And Jerry still has the helmet on as he yelling at us. <laughs> And I'm like, we've got to, you've got to take the helmet off. I can't, I can't, I can't keep a straight face when you have that small ass helmet on and coach is just yelling at us. But did he not notice you with the helmet on? He was just no. Nah, I think he, age. I think he was watching this whole thing go on and like, cause like everyone's around the cage, so I don't think he like saw me until I was actually in the cage with it on, and I like took one swing and like fouled the ball off, and he fucking he freaked lost. out. <laughs> so he that was that. So he says, so we call it four man ball. They turned into three-man ball. We did four-man ball, and yeah. then we turned it into three-man yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is anyway, this game? What is this game? It's it's like a you got like three or four teams, depending on how many hitters you have, and you have to pick one side of the field to hit to. So there's fielders on one side of the field. We're all going oppo this round. Okay. And then there's a scoring system of like you if hit you catch it, you're out. out and the other dirt. teams are standing around the cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other teams are allowed to say whatever they want to you. They can they can shit talk you. So so you yeah, can yeah, yeah. so you can imagine with me and I, oh we had we God. had we called our team the Four Horsemen. It was me, Chad, Leon. <laughs> And Chris McGee, all four <laughs> brothers on the squad, yeah. on the same squad. We so we didn't even really we could care less about if we actually won in the cage. Just we just wanted shit. to talk the most shit. shit. That's yeah. all we wanted to do. Yeah. Just, we wanted to be the biggest clowns like on the field. Then yeah. you had yeah. then you had those four. Then you had Chris McGee and I'm Chris. You had uh, Buzzy Heidel, Nick Pontiff, Grant Dozar, and Bo Didier on one team. Yeah. <laughs> the four horsemen from the bench. Yeah. Who all they did was talk shit to the opposing coach on the bench. So you had two of the big, and you had Sean no Cheek. I was like, was, bro, it was, I, oh, it was dude, ours match. was like, hey, once you got in the cage, you might hear like somebody might get their feelings hurt. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, and that's, that's all hitting, it was about. If you're hitting, you can't respond. You can't yeah. respond. You can't uh, respond. Uh, respond. You're out. Yeah, yeah. you gotta just smile. Yeah. The only thing you can do is smile. But and like, coach would take that secretly. He would. Oh take yeah, it. Oh, he loved that part. Oh, he loved it. He would take it very serious. Like. 
you can you can make fun of people and he might jump in there and yeah. make fun of some guys, but you can't respond and you like you gotta take your at bat seriously. Like you were saying, like you're popping up a few, like he's gonna get mad. Yeah. And so we had the same thing as y'all. We kinda had like some goofy names. We hit like my team name was the Scheme and Siemens for whatever. Reason. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we had another team's name that was your mother's box. <laughs> <laughs> and so like Michael was doing the, he had to do the scoring. So like it, the scoring's a little like difficult. And of course, the, ro- Micah does. the rotation Duh. of like Duh. who's in the lead, like depends on who's hitting and who's in the field yeah. and whatever. So like the rotation gets confusing sometimes. And this was 2018. We weren't like playing that well. So coach was a little uptight, even though we're like goofing around, like we kind of have to be serious and we can't figure out the rotation. And like, so there's just like a stall, like everybody's just chilling. We're like, we can't figure it out. And Micah's like, Micah's like confused. He's trying to figure stuff out. And Maneri's like, he's starting to get fucking pissed. So he, he walks up, he grabs, he grabs a thing. He's like, Micah's like, how are you going to figure this out? He's like, your mother's box should be on defense. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody, everybody was just like, oh. <laughs> like we had to start laughing. Even, even he, even Maneri. He realized like, that, yeah, this is like, like yeah. this is just too funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steven Stevens, what are y'all doing out here? <laughs> So the four-man ball, usually like the first, like we get there on Thursday and you have a batting practice. So the four-man ball would be the end of batting practice on the Thursday at your practice on the field and just kind of get used to it. Yeah, bit. on the lights. Yeah. At home, it'd be always an evening practice, kind of get going. On the road, you had pizza. And like if you won it, your team won, you just didn't have to pick up the ball. So that was like the... It's a great treat, though. Yeah, it was great. You didn't have to do anything. Cool. Yeah. But he would overreact. On it. It was, those are, they don't do that anymore, huh? Yeah. I don't think they play four man ball. They didn't play four man ball the last couple of years. Year, well, yeah. we didn't. We didn't my first few years, and then we brought it back. Uh, we brought it back middle of the year in 2017 because because he felt like we just needed to like uh, relax a little bit in 17 because like we were under, <coughs> underperforming. Then we ended up going to Omaha, whatever. And ever since then, we played. We had it. spikes up, slide, and lost the games with Florida. Was yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> that. <laughs> that was a big blow up too. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Oof. I bet because he. I'm, I'm sure that. I'm sure. And then there's there's. Fall Maneri, which is like he has to force it. Season Maneri, which is like that's pretty emotional. Postseason Maneri is like, you know. <laughs> hey, I have, so funny story about so postseason Maneri. Like if you mess up, there's no like second, like not second. There's no like talking it out. It's whatever. So I'm on. We're playing the. Re, I'm a freshman. We're playing the regional at home, and we're playing. Maybe it was Minnesota. So Eric Decker was actually playing for Minnesota. He's their center fielder. Yeah. The wider, yeah, he was he was good. Yeah. I'm on second base. He well, I mean, he's his wife. College. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He played two sports. I'm at second. Well, he went to Minnesota. Too, yeah, he so went to Minnesota. Right? I mean, that's gonna be a little, Minnesota. <laughs> I'm at second. I don't forget who's at third base. There's one out. Earlier in the year, I had an issue with, not issue, but I had a, a play where I took off and I ran to an out on the same situation. We're on second and third, right? So Javi Sanchez is our third base coach, and he's like, make sure you see the ball. Jay Mitch is hitting. Make sure you see it through. Make sure you see the ball through, like, you know, whatever. I'm like, all right, so I'm in my head. See the ball through, see the ball through, see the ball through. I'm so locked in on this situation, I forget that Jared walked, <laughs> right? So now the bases are loaded with one out, right? And then in the regional, we're on the other dugout. We're not in our normal dugout. And so the next ball is hit, and I'm not joking. It's perfect, perfect base running for the second and third. <laughs> the ball is hit to my right. I take my second here. I see it. I shuffle back. I go back to second. I see Jared running, and Jared's like, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Like, Hello. I'm like, oh, no. I, it was such a bad base running mistake, I confused the infield. They didn't even turn double play. They didn't turn double play, right? So Maneri was mad at me, and the announcers were like, Thinking that I did something like smart. And I'm like, it was so bad that nobody had any idea what I was doing. <laughs> I run out of the, I finish, I'm like, oh no. And so instead of running to the front to the tunnel, I went the back corner of the dugout, through the thing, like thinking that I was going to hide from coach. And I turn back around and come back through. And the first person I see is Coach Mary looking around with his head. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, uh, I don't know. I fucked up. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't know. I have nothing to tell you. I, I mean, I, I fucked up. I didn't he was like, that you're, so lucky. you're so lucky they fucked that play up and then turned double play. I'm like, I know. I know I am. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I fucked up. I really did. But that's how it is. Like, there's no, like. Is that the maddest he's ever been at you? Dude. Uh, there's a couple. There's a couple instances. Preseason in area is bad too. So preseason area makes us do this base running situation where you had to pretend there was a ball being hit. No ball was being hit, and it was like you had to like 
as soon as the right fielder was fielding the ball and throwing, and you had to read the ball and read the throw running around second, but there's no ball being hit or thrown. <laughs> and so we're doing this. We're it, it's, it, it's, it's, we're doing this baseball thing. Visualization if yeah. you. And this wow. is and this is my sophomore year, and coach for some reason decided that he was going to be hard on me this one day. So like I'm doing this stuff and I'm doing the base run and I had to go from first to third ten times in a row because I couldn't get the ball get it right. There's no ball. There's no ball, but I couldn't get it right. Everybody else was getting it right. I couldn't get it right. He just kept making me do it and I was furious. And so I finally finished. And so Micah and some of the guys were trying to like clapping, like sarcastically joking. I was like, don't fucking clap for me. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> no fucking ball being hit. And then Maneri looked at me. He's, don't let him fucking talk to you like that. Clap for him. So we're arguing about not clapping and clapping. He's like, clap for him. Clap for him. I'm like, no, don't clap for me. And Maneri's saying, clap for me. I'm like, and his coach is, I'm looking at coach and he's looking at me. I'm getting mad and then just let it go. But like, that's, what, that's what he does. He'll test you and he'll do stuff like preseason in area is awful because he just tries to test you and try to get on your skin. But there's been a few times. That was, that was the one. That was, when I got to my junior year, I, I, got, I got off the, the off the get mad. Yeah. yeah, off the shit list. I left him speechless a couple times. It's pretty cool. I enjoyed enjoy doing that. My favorite is when you and Sean got in a fight and Coach said, let him go. It's good for the, it's good for oh, the team. Oh, yeah. It was pretty much on the base running business. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> that used to be good. It's be good. Yeah, good. I've left them speechless a couple yeah. times. I, I I really salute myself for those. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you get sometimes and then you get you call him out and he's like, wait, I'm probably am being a little irrational here, and he doesn't have anything to say, but he can't back down, so he just ignores it, just goes away. It's great. <laughs> it's great. But whew, we could talk all day about Coach Mary stories. We have him on Friday, so I'm gonna we're gonna start. I'm sorry, we're gonna we're, hopefully you're no, there. No, we can't me. tell him those ones. He, he'll, he'll literally. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it. We gotta get him loose. We gotta get him loose on on the stage on Friday. He's not so gonna, that, he's, he's either not gonna remember him or he's gonna say he's not gonna. He's remember. Just, yeah, yeah, no he, doubt. He, he, no he, doubt. He's not engaging in them. No doubt. Yeah, those <laughs> are out of his brain. Like he, he like cleaned those out somehow. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So we've kept you here obviously for 45 minutes. We, this is gonna be. We're gonna be all the way to one o'clock. You're gonna be so happy for us. I want to say it. Yeah. So happy. All the way to one. He's gonna be very happy. But. Last thing, so I didn't have a senior day. He didn't have a senior day. You had a senior day, right? You had you had you had broken the hitch record. You were a legend. You know you had all these accolades. How cool was senior day? And I know coach likes to make it cool for those guys. I know this is kind of like that was kind of like your send off. Like, how cool was that for you? That was really cool. And um, yeah, just got to got to hug Maneri with they they gave us a little picture like they got the framed jersey right. now like right. kind of like that and. Um, Got to be out there with my family on the field, and I thought that was going to be my last. Actually, we didn't know for sure if that was going to be my last weekend at Alex Box. So at that moment, I right. thought like that might be my right. my last weekend. Right. But then we ended up we ended up making a little run in the SC tournament, so we hosted a regional. And then I thought that was going to be my last weekend at Alex Box. And then some stuff happened, and then we ended up hosting a super regional. Because, that was Florida State because Georgia lost, and they were supposed right. to be the the super regional host. Right. So then we got to. We got to host a super, but then we lost in the super, which is not fun. But. Yeah, that was uh, Mike Martin, right? That was the last year. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was going to happen last year with Coach. Yeah. His last year after he announced his because Mike Martin now his retirement right. and Florida State got hot. They weren't very good during the year. They got hot and made it all the way to Omaha. Oh yeah, because LSU fans were thinking like, oh, they get to run into Florida State, who wasn't very good. The only thing they had on their side, it felt like, was well, their head coach is retiring, and yep. it's like I can't play that big of a factor. But they were scorching they hot. Were, they got hot. Got and all they, the way to Omaha. Spoken into existence. He was just like. We're not gonna let this be a factor. Like it doesn't matter that it's Mike Martin's. It's a whatever. Big it's Mike Martin. Big, big Cinderella, <laughs> Cinderella story. It's not gonna be like that. And it's like it ended up being like that. <laughs> of course it did. Exactly of course it did. We're talking about it. It's like when he does the like. Then he do the same with you. He's like, I had this team in 09. That I had this team in 08. And he, he's like, he tries to always compare. Like yeah, he yeah. believes in like destiny. He was he was big on him. Oh, sure yeah. he's, he is huge. That's that's why the I Mike wanted, Martin I, thing freaked him out because he's. He's so huge on death. I still never met him yet, but I'd love to meet uh, the Steve Stanley guy. Apparently, he's a Steve Stanley from Notre Dame. Yeah, oh my god. Apparently, you you heard about Steve Stanley too? I got. He was like, he was like, he was like, you're my Steve Stanley. I have Steve Stanley's number. We text every once like once a year. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) I'd love to meet him. He called me. Apparently, he's a great guy. When when Maneri brought me for Team USA, he called me, and I was talking to Steve Stanley on the phone. (laughs) Legendary. Oh boy. Steve Stanley's not even real. Steve Stanley. Yep. Steve think, Stanley. Is Steve, Steve Stanley real? Or do you think Steve. it's Steve? Better Dan. No, he's, no, real. he's a real dude. But nobody's met him except for Maneri. <laughs> I've seen pictures of him. Okay. okay. <laughs> he's, a real guy. He's, a real yeah. guy. he's a real guy. He's a real guy. He's a real guy. He's a real guy. All right. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna end. We have like, we're not in now. We're going to end the show. You can stay. Sit down. Talk with us. 
whatever, make fun of our bets that we're about to show. I'll tell you that we have going on. Um, we did not talk about our bets beginning of the season, maybe beginning of the season, beginning of the show. Look at you. Got to work know, over got there. Got it done. Got it done. Doing work over there. Uh, you didn't add my 16 parlay. That's not, no, that's no. not my, that's not my bets. This is the newest one that we had. Hurricanes, huh? That's yeah. okay. He's that's been hopping on a little hockey lately. No, no, that's, that's our guys. That's our guys' uh, bets. Yeah, yeah. That's our guys. So, so that's fine. I'll read mine out. So the bets under Mikey on the graphic oh, the is guys. from our guy. That's his bets for the game for today, right? So he obviously, we're just talking about how hot he was two days ago and how cold he was yesterday. This could make up for it. These are his bets that he has. We've got Hurricanes money line, Furman West 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 Carolina <laughs> over 145 and a half. Yeah, he did a lot of research on those boys. Yeah. Uh, Illinois yeah. Rutgers over Trailblazers plus 11 and a half. And Hawks versus Spurs parlay money line. So he wants both teams to win the money line. Look at that. Look at you. Moving it right in the middle. Slide it in there. For me, and I'll I'll have them. Well, I'll make Jack post them on on Twitter. I have a six team parlay. All right, it's a plus one fifty nine. Right, so I'm in plus money. Obviously, you better be in plus money if you're betting a sixteen. Sixteen, parlay. and you're not. You should yeah, just it's not good. I have Auburn money line. I have Auburn to win. I have Alabama to win. I have North Carolina win. I have LSU to win. I have Marquette to win. And I have Purdue to win. I think that's about, I'm not saying that word. But I think there's a good chance that one hits, boys. It's a good chance. It's a good Oops. chance. There's always a chance that it doesn't. There's a good chance. Word, I also saying. took LSU. I got a little carried away. I started getting, I got a little carried away. I got LSU under 144 today. I think they win. They may win by the spread, but I think that they hold Georgia under the points to where it gets to 144. If LSU goes 80 and win by 60, they I cover. Definitely also teasing. got Baylor money line, but that's you, plus money too. Baylor's a better, a higher ranked team than Texas Tech, and they're plus money. Ooh, that's, that's that's called cheese. I know that's, one that's, and a half. That's the cheese. That's I'm what you got to watch out for. I'm taking it. I take. Oh, I took uh, Baylor plus money. Plus money. That's my best. You, y'all talked about coaching and like kind of holding on to maybe some grudges like Paul Benary does. I would imagine Will Wade has got a little bit of Georgia in his craw after giving up. 90 points to him last year twice true and now they're supposed to be this big defensive team i'm sure he has been harping on I hope. holding georgia to under if not my under ain't gonna hit is. yes i hope that's he does saying, but there's he'll be little... in defense because if not i'm my under is fucked right? yeah but i'm saying i think he'll be i think that'll be like probably a lot of what he's been talking about at practice like oh, i don't think georgia because georgia's not very good he's like you know i thought that last year they put 90 on you so I'm sure he's putting that in the players true, here a little bit. True. So I like I like that. You're giving yeah, good so juju. Now, yeah, I'm teasing juju. the under and LSU. Of course you're teasing. Yeah, of course. Tickle me on. Of course, me. sixteen. You can get it Jack, down to ten. Pull up jacks. Pull up jacks. Okay. So Jacks got the Wizards. You have the Raptors. Murray over twenty one and a half. Avalanche. You're not taking UConn. Can't make this pleasure. Thought you were doing. No, it. I was. I was a big. Uh, I may take the other one. I may take the over, but I also I also think that UConn may get upset today. Well, they lost them before. I know. Where are they playing? Seton Hall. Five and a half. Five and a half. I, plus five and a half. I just like taking I like taking some of the underdog bets to get the plus money. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Where are they? Where are we playing? Where's at UConn? Yeah. You can tell who's confident and who's not confident. All the bets. You got one bet for Tickle Me Elmo over there. LSU basketball I'm teaser. a good teaser. I'm going to get oh, into the NBA I, I, re- I really hadn't done much on it yet. Now you got the sterling on your face. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in the middle. Oh. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that thing's really in there. Let's the only it. thing I took so far is I just took a little same game parlay. We we'll love Ooh, same game parlay. Yeah, I just took the – it was the Hawks in, uh, at the Magic today. I took them uh, the under 229 and a half, Hawks money line, and Trey Young with two plus threes in the game. Oh, man. Oh. That's, oh. I'm, at a plus, Wait, well, I'm confused with that. At How is that aligned? How is a two plus threes aligned for Trey Young? What do you think it should be higher? Yeah, he's only averaging three on the road. I don't, yeah, don't, don't. True, I guess. It's Trey Young. You just assume that he's going to pull up from the half hey, court. Three plus in a game is, is that's a lot. Yeah, dude. but you said two plus. Two plus. So if he gets I, two, I if he gets if yeah. he gets two though, are you pushing or is that you no, win? Two, I win. Yeah, so, so it's over one and a half or yeah. one and a half. No, it's literally two plus. Oh, so if he hits two or more. Yeah. Okay. So one and a half. I don't have. I don't. I'll, I'll put one in a little later. I don't have one right now. I don't have one right now. I haven't. I gotta do a little more hockey research. I gotta oh, I still got Italy out there in the curling too. They're, they're not dead so yet. They're what? Italy in the curling team. Are they still, still alive? alive. They're, they're still they're alive. They're defying the odds. They, I think they upset. Um, Ooh, they had upset. I think they, they, they upset chance. Canada or USA. Maybe so they, I don't know. Yeah, but Italy is still Somewhere out there. Cold. Wow. <laughs> Plus like three thousand. If you hit that, your futures, you've, your futures have been good for you. I know. That's see, that's where I, that's where I thrive. I make my bets before the year starts. 
I saw Matt Stafford go to the Rams, and I said, they're going to win the Super Bowl. So that's when I do it. So i got to figure out what's next for – and another future end is LSU baseball to win the national championship, win the whole thing. Well, plus plus fifteen hundo. Yeah. Would you do that whole future? They're not going to play baseball this year. Mikey's here for well, the long haul. Well, we're playing. Hey, take it easy. Take it, <laughs> take easy. it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. We're playing. I mean, I mean, they moved up. We got one day on the books. It sounds like we're moving today. <laughs> well, minor league baseball got yeah. moved up a day. Uh-huh. That's uh huh. That's it. It's a lot of, making a lot of progress. Okay, so I know I didn't tell y'all. We didn't. Uh, we didn't. Y'all didn't prepare for this probably, but for the for our curtain call, I have a curtain call. Uh, so that's as long as we get one in there. As long as you got mine. My curtain call is. I think this is a long time coming. Jay Mitch knows him. I know him. We got to work out with him. Unbelievable guy. Curtain call Ryan Zimmerman. Nope. He just retired. Officially retired from the Nationals. I think last year he announced it, but officially it's reti- he's retired. First draft pick of the Nationals. Finished his, finished his career with the Nationals. Won a World Series with the Nationals. Mr. National. Yeah. Um, awesome guy. Class at. Like, couldn't have been a better guy. Couldn't have been better to me. My When I first got drafted and went and worked out with all these big leaguers, like, always there, always offered advice. Just great, all-around great guy. And I'm happy that he got a World Series, happy that he had the career that he had, and hat tip, tip of the cap, curtain call to Ryan Zimmerman. Unbelievable that he got that World Series in Washington because he was washed. Yeah. Like, wasn't he all And he had some big there? moments that year, That's too. That's what I'm saying. He played, yeah. he played great. When did yeah, he, yeah, yeah. How old is he? 37. 36, 37, 37, yeah. Yeah, so when he came back, he's like, I don't know how much you're going to get out of Virginia, all of Virginia, University of Virginia. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. 1-1? One, yeah. one? Uh, not 1. I don't think he went 1 overall, but he was a first rounder. He was their first pick. Maybe 1. I would imagine he might they, have been one. I don't one. think he got the first. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I mean, he was he, he was I, he was their first pick. Ever. He was their first pick ever. When ever. he moved from Montreal, he was the yeah. first pick that the Nationals That's took. Sweet. And it ended up being a guy who played 16 years with great pick. Good pick. Great pick. Yeah. Didn't swing a missile now. No, he great. Yeah, he made yeah. a bunch of All Star teams. Like he was, yeah. he was a great. Won a couple gold, gold gloves and silver sluggers. Yeah, I, I mean, he was, he was, he was missing that, and he was like, and he was, and he was a great person. Like it was. He was just a great person to have as your first pick of an organization. Yeah. Didn't miss, didn't do whatever. He was he was good. There was another one that I wanted to have the safety for the the Rams. Oh yeah. I'll give it somebody else could pick down. I forget his name. Taylor Taylor, Taylor Rapp. Taylor Rapp. Oh, oh there's your curtain Weddle. call. Yeah. There's your curtain call, Eric. What I'm talking about Taylor Rapp. He proposed to his girlfriend after they won. We had a conversation Wait. about this after. Do you does he propose if he loses? No. No, no chance. No. You don't think so? No. He had the ring. Yeah, no. How did he get that? Just save it for another. Can you get to the ring? No, no. <laughs> Do you have to give that to like an equipment manager? I'm sure some. Yeah, I'm sure someone had it. That's a, that's, just that's a lot of. Pr- that's a lot of. No, you don't he didn't play, play with it, it in his <laughs> cleat. Yeah. He had some scuffs on his elbow, so he actually got in the game. So it wasn't like he was on the bench. And he probably dropped a snap for the extra point. Oof. He's like a starter, isn't he? One of them. Yeah, I mean, he, he had Weddle. No, no. He's no like he's one of the starters. He's like. Really yeah, I think good. so. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Proposed to his girlfriend. Also, uh, Simone Biles got proposed to. From I know what's another... going on. Love is oh February. It's February Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. Heart Would day. you propose on? On the field? Yeah. Hell no. If you... <laughs> <laughs> That's taken away from everybody else. That's too. what I'm saying. If like, you good had... for you, but no. I don't give a shit. Really. Also, I'll tell you what. I'm not proposing on the field as a college athlete either. All these college guys that go and propose, like the running back was the first one I saw. I remember doing Ian it from Johnson, Boise State. State. Ian Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that his name? Ian Johnson. Mm-hmm. He did the Statue of Liberty play. He did. That Slow as shit. Yeah, he proposed to his cheerleader girlfriend, which is great, but like, no. you're too it, young. It I mean, became, I'm, I'm and it became, getting proposed it and that's too early. Yeah, it became yeah. more of the story, too. Right, in your life right, than, than right. That you want that's a big, I just... What no. do you, th- has that ever happened to you? Like, anybody, like, on your team that's like, hey, I'm going to propose after the game? No. no. I'm also not proposing in a sport arena, in a sporting arena, mid-game, as a fan. <laughs> not doing that. There's no way that any girl in the history of girls was like, I'm so happy you did it this way. Especially a minor league baseball game. People well, do that. I've seen that Dude, we many had, we had a wedding <laughs> ten times. We had a wedding on, the, on top yeah, of I've the press it. box. Mid-game? Wedding right before. Like, we were hitting BP and we were having a wedding. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Talk about live entertainment, though. Whoa. Brooklyn yeah. Cyclones, yeah. And I'm just like, man. I'm sitting in the outfield. I'm like, oh, my God. What are you doing? Like, Savvy sold separately. That's just too much. Savvy sold separately. Javi Sanchez, Javiism. We gotta get that on a shirt. Yes. We need to start using that. That's a hobby. That's a hobby. Uh, that's a hobby. I like the, right the ricochet. 
The little Irishman. <laughs> we get, Ricochet. <laughs> we could we could we could have a whole day of Javiism. Oh my god, you could literally Javi play. Sanchez. You could fill a wall with Javi. Javi Sanchez, one of my favorite hitting coaches of all time. One of my favorite people favorite of all, of, all people of all time. The most ADD mm-hmm. human being you've ever met in your life. He'll have a conversation like this on Monday, right? We're talking, having a conversation. He'll just leave mid conversation. You're like, oh, I guess over. Come back on Wednesday, pick up the conversation exactly where that left off. That's awesome. How how do you remember that? I don't even remember what we were talking about. Why but did you walk away? Yeah, ADD dude, yeah. ADD. Awesome guy though. Worked his ass Great off. Great guy. Great guy. I miss Javi. I need to call Javi. I need to talk to him. We made it. All. Oh, actually, what's for lunch? What's for lunch is brought to you by Doe's Eat Place. I'm starving. I know y'all are hungry. You've been grinding early this morning. You've been grinding. You've been grinding. You've been grinding. Y'all been hit. Eat, you already went yeah. hit. You already ate? No, I have to eat. You have to eat. Yeah. What, what, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Ask the guest. What do you think? What do you want? What do you think? Y'all are ordering stuff here? Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, Usually. Oh. What are you feeling for lunch though? What do you think? Like what's what's good? What are you what are you craving? I'm still getting used to this side of town. I'm used to like the near LSU campus side of town. It's okay. Now I live off of Jefferson. I need to kinda of get used to Yeah, yeah they got used to this better rush. Look at Weddle's pet, dude, toured on the second play of the game. Played the whole rest of the game. And he still and he was uh he was the one that had the earpiece in his helmet, so he had to stay in so he could call the defense. Oh wow. Dude, he was tackling with his helmet. He was. Played three plus quarters with a ruptured He led pet. the team in tackles during the playoffs. Ruptured peck. Jeez. And he hadn't played in seven hundred and fifty days until the playoff game. I just wanna know what they shot him up with. I mean <laughs> He's feeling they good. He wasn't just, feeling uh, his peck. Just I peck. Yeah, he just kept it playing, was, huh? It was like when Gronk uh, like what Broke his ankle or his foot or whatever. They must, have, had they must have gave him that shit they tried to give Antonio Brown. That tore dog. But he didn't run off the field naked. <laughs> <laughs> he shoot me up. Oh, his ankle felt real good on that. <laughs> well, that's what they did to Gronk. And then, because uh, everybody's making a big deal if he could play or not. And then that's when the Patriots lost. But they go to the after party at Gronk's dancing shirtless on the same foot. They're like, yeah, guess you know still, I guess he still feels pretty great. good. Yeah, because that shit don't wear off until uh-huh. like Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm sure on Wednesday, he was like, I shouldn't have been out there dancing, probably. Robert Kraft's about to call me. What's your lunch? You like Izzo's? Love it. I haven't had Izzo's in a minute. You like Izzo's? You like Izzo's? We used to crush Izzo's. I used to get hammered at football games and get illegal. Jesus. Jesus. They, 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 don't even, they don't put that on the menu for you to get. It's just an I used idea. To get it, yeah. And that thing was heavy. Well, you think? I hope so. Heavy. I used to crush that. And I felt terrible after, but I used to eat it all. Are you, could you do that today? No. I mean, probably could, yeah. but I ain't going to digest as Shut well as down I did when I was 21 years old. I promise you that. Shut, Shut down, down the, the day. day. Don't, don't Shut down me. the bathrooms. Yeah. Well, go I'm home. Doubt. <laughs> I would go to Izzo's for the margaritas. Whenever, Never whenever. had the margaritas. You know what they do have good? You know what they do have? That's their, their shrimp, their grilled shrimp's good. Oh. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, I'm suspect sneaky. about all this. Things. I know. I know you are. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I want to cook my own shrimp. Oh, my God. But we God. would go. The scramp? With scramps. Whatever. The LSU golf course. You don't cook them scrimps. <laughs> <laughs> whenever the LSU golf course was worth the shit, we would go when there. When was that? Uh, whenever I was in college, like it was still playable. Okay. You know, it was like five dollars, ten dollars, just kind of go. What? Uh, but Izzo's would do had two for one margaritas, frozen margaritas. So I'd get two of those suckers, go play golf, come back, and just now I got to go to Izzo's again to eat. But that's the way you would set yourself up. Well, Izzo's run two margaritas, bring them to the course, oh. boom, have a day. I like that. Izzo's it is. Izzo's it is. We we'll get it for the boys, for the squad. For the boys. Party pack. Well, thanks for hanging out with us on Wednesday. We got you all the way to one o'clock. We're here. We did it. We made it. We said eleven to one. We haven't made it to one. We made it to one today. <laughs> did it. Thanks to the boys for showing up. Antoine, thanks for coming, bro. I appreciate uh, yeah. that. We kept you for a whole hour. I know. I don't know if you got much going on, but I have zero things. Going perfect. On. <laughs> perfect. Love that. That's what we love to hear. Uh, it's Wednesday, February sixteenth. Thank y'all for tuning in to Mic'd Up. We will be live. In person, 3.30 to 5.30, Friday at, from Fred's. Pre-gaming LSU. Pre-gaming, actually. We got, it's going to be middle of the day. Show up got and a little, get your swings in. Got a little liquor. Show L- up and get your swings in. Yeah, show up and get, get your, your swings, swings in. We're going to have BP. some move, little, yeah, little, little, BP little home run derby, little BP. Get you some. Like a little four man. Yeah, get you a little lubed up before the game. We got some food. Yeah. We're going to have some drinks. We're going to have some people there. We're going to have some coach Maneri's going to show up. We're going to have some former players. Leading you all the way up to first. Maybe there. some current players come dream before. I'm just joking. No <laughs> current players. But uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Antoine's going to be there. Jay Mitchell's going to be there. <laughs> Kevin Goswin's going to be there. Coach Maneri's going to be there. Yeah. What? Huh? Yeah. Who? When? Why? Everyone. Where? All the food, all the drinks, uh, and a lot of good times. A lot of good talking, a lot of making fun. 
And look, we're gonna be a little intoxicated sometimes, maybe on the on the. Yeah, we'll on toss the, some uh, beers to the boys. They're about yeah, to be a little, a little intoxicated on the, for everybody, on the stage. So we're yeah. gonna have some, we're gonna have some, we're gonna have real yeah, loose, throw those yeah, real entertaining. Last bottle now. <laughs> no, hey, hey, trust your hands. <laughs> Enjoy your hump day. This is Mike Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive.